Happy Tuesday to each one of you, uh, God's children, and we greet you in the name of Jesus, uh, and we say th uh, uh, that we're so happy that you're with us uh, tonight uh, as we uh, get ready to uh, study God's word. Uh, hope and trust that you're excited about the word of God because it is the word of God that excuse me, changes us. It is the word of God that transforms us, uh, is transforming us. Uh, by the word of God, uh, it is uh, the sanctification process that we're involved in where the Holy Spirit is helping us and molding us into the image of Christ. And so uh, we again thank you. This is the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we're located at 3005 East Ellicott Street, Tampa, Florida, 33610. Uh, and just so uh, excited that you have taken time out uh, of your uh, busy schedule uh, uh, and, and because you uh, know that, that, that the word of God is, is needed in your life. And so we just hope and well, we know that if we cooperate, God will bless us tonight. Father, we come now in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, God, we come uh, with thanksgiving on, uh, on our, in our hearts and, and, and praise on our lips, God, that, that you are our God. And, and in other, no, there's no other God uh, besides you. You're the only living God, and we trust you, O oh, Heavenly Father. And so we come now. Uh, asking that you will forgive us uh, for our sins, O oh, Heavenly Father. Make us fit to be in your presence that we might study uh, your word, uh, O oh, Heavenly Father. Help me, O oh, Heavenly Father, that I might rightly divide the word of truth, um, that there will be open and receptive hearts to what uh, you have given me to give your people, uh, O oh, Heavenly Father. Help us now. We pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Again, good evening, and um, so glad to see you. Uh, tonight, we're going to pick up again uh, in uh, the book of James, uh, chapter 1, verse 21. We were just at the end of verse 21 uh, last week and uh, wanted to spend some time with that, that last portion of, of verse 21. Um, um, we established last week that uh, James says that we ought to, uh, uh, since we know, since, since we know that we are, uh, 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 should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, being God, uh, uh, since we know uh, that we are to be uh, 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 quick to hear, uh, uh, we ought to be, be, be uh, uh, slow to speak, we ought to be slow to wrath, uh, since we know these things, we ought to put uh, aside, lay apart all filthiness, all evil conduct. We talked about last week, um, if you want a picture in your mind, it is as though we are, are taking off dirty clothes. We're stripping away uh, dirty clothes because evil conduct is displeasing to God. Uh, it's offensive to God, and if we love God, we don't want to offend him. And so, and so we want to take off this filthiness that, that seeks to cling to us. And we talked about the fact that we, we got we to gotta arrest this thing uh, when it tr tries to take root first in our mind. It, it seeks to defile the mind first. And if once the mind uh, is, is not brought into subjection based on the word of God, then the mind will then lead to actions of the body. Uh, that are displeasing to God. So we got to see sin as wrong. In the mind first, see it as a violation of, of God. Uh, and so, so he says we need to, we need to, 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 to strip it away. We understand that, that, that we talked about uh, this, this, this filthiness uh, and sometimes used as wax in the ears. Uh, and that it can, it, what happens is spiritually uh, this filthiness will clog up. Uh, our ability to hear uh, the word of God. So that put it away like a filthy rag. 
Um, and then we talked about malice. We talked about malice, which has its root in wrath uh, and anger. That's where malice springs forth. And malice is having this evil disposition toward others. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, we should never have an uh, evil disposition, uh, evil thoughts, evil de developing evil intent about another brother or sister, especially brother or sister in Christ, but, not, but uh, uh, this extends even to all mankind, right? Even when uh, mankind treats us wrong, we should uh, strive not to have evil disposition uh, against them. We talked about uh, uh, this being a sense of uh, uh, the thought of circumcision, where you what cut away, cut away from the heart uh, uh, these uh, evil intentions, this uh, naughtiness, uh, this filthiness, uh, and we said that once we cut it away, there's a there's a hole, there's a void left, but that void is then to be filled with the word of God, and that's where we're going to pick up tonight because uh, the uh, verse twenty one in its entirety reads. Wherefore, lay, aside, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of daughterness and receive with meekness the, here it goes, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So James doesn't leave us hanging. He doesn't say uh, strip away uh, uh, or, or put aside uh, filthiness and naughtiness and then just walk away. He says one should do that. Then he says, then we are to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And so that's what we're going to pick up tonight as we move forward um, uh, in our study. So what James says at this, the end of verse 21, James chapter 1, verse 21, when he says, and receive with meekness, the engrafted word, what James says, it is with humility that we ought to receive uh, this word of God. All right? Uh, uh, it is with mildness as opposed to wrath. We get, we get, there's, 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 he's, he's telling us as opposed to having wrath in our heart, when we remove that wrath, then we are to receive that void we talked about that's left when we, when we cut away this other stuff. Then we are to receive with humility, with mildness as opposed to wrath that we are to receive. That's how the word of God is to be received. The word is to be received with gentleness as opposed to a contentious spirit. Because, now listen, because we talked about if we have a contentious spirit, uh, if we have malice in our heart, wrath, uh, all of these things, it is going to prevent the hearing of God's word. So, when, but, 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 but when we remove those things, we replace them with a, uh, a humble heart, mild heart, a gentle heart, a gentle and non-contentious spirit. And when we have this gentleness, then we are to receive the engrafted word, all right? Now, to receive this word, when we see receive, got to understand that, that to receive it's not only to receive head knowledge, all right? Head knowledge is very, very important, all right? I got I to gotta get into the word and develop knowledge around what the word says, what it means. Very, very important uh, that we study God's word. We get knowledge about uh, who God is from his word. Uh, we get knowledge about the mind of God uh, from his word. Uh, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. But I got to get some knowledge about the mind of Christ Jesus uh, based on what he did. I need that knowledge, but I can't stop there. It's not just to receive 
the head knowledge, but more importantly, I've got to receive the word in my heart. You've got to you gotta, you gotta receive it because, listen, I can have knowledge of something, yet I reject it. And we're going to get into to some doing stuff uh, in some further study. Um, but, but just because I know it does not mean that I really embrace it in my spirit. All right? So when James says receive the engrafted word, he, first you got to get some knowledge, yes, but then more importantly, I got to receive it or there must be receipt of it, embracing it in my heart, all right? Now, and so he gives us the formula. He gives us the formula as to how we are to receive what? This engrafted what word. <laughs> to accomplish this, I got to have a certain mindset, all right? I've got to have a certain mindset, and my mindset has to be uh, 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 one of meekness, of gentleness, all right? That's the formula. If I'm going to, if I'm going to embrace or receive the word in my heart, in my spirit, Okay, if I'm going to receive it, the first thing I got to do is make sure that the, the avenue is clear for receiving it and the avenue clearing the way to get it or to receive it is to be meek and gentle in my heart. So what happens is if you want to have a traffic jam that blocks the word from taking root in you, if you want to have a blockage, that blockage is going to be what? Wrath? It's going to be what? what Filthiness, naughtiness, all those things, this evil conduct that we talked about. God's word is trying to get to the heart, but if I have these other things in place, it's going to block it. I won't hear it. I may hear it audibly, and we're going to talk about some of this as we go in our studies. I'm going to hear, I'm going to hear this audibly, but I'm, there is no true hearing because true hearing means I'm hearing it and I'm receiving it in the heart. So I got to have, out of, in place of these other things that block me hearing, I, I got to have a meekness or a gentleness. All right, because you got to understand something about the heart. And this is not talking about the ticker. We're talking about the spirit of man. We're talking about the mind. Uh, a, a humble heart is, is a heart that's ready to receive seed. See, 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 when I got a stony heart, when I, when I, and, and God has already replaced our stony heart, uh, but, but it's up to us to put, to, to, to lean to that, to that, that pliable heart that he's given us as a new creation, uh, as opposed to a stony heart. We can cling to some of the stuff that is uh, uh, evident in a stony heart, those things being filthiness, naughtiness, uh, malice, those things we've already talked about. Uh, 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 but when we replace those things with that humble heart, now the heart is ready to receive seed. Seed being the word of God. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Book of Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. <clears throat> Mark chapter 4. And verse 20, it says, and these are they which are sown of good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And so I've got to have the right heart to then what? Receive what? The word. To receive what? The word of God. That's the good ground. That, that heart that, that is humble, that heart that is uh, gentle, meek, this meek heart is one that is ready to receive. 
Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And uh, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. It says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Huh. They received the word with readiness of mind. In other words, there was a ready heart. There was a ready heart. That means that heart was what? Gentle. Uh, that heart was humble. And so now it was ready to what? Receive. Ready to receive. All right? Let me, can't, can't, gotta go back to wrath and anger. Wrath or anger in your heart, it causes you to be unreachable and unteachable. There's too much blocking your teachability, hearing the word of God, being taught by the Holy Spirit. If I'm walking around angry all the time, full of wrath, which now is going to spring to me having evil, a malice and evil disposition toward others, it renders me unreachable and unteachable. All right? But James gives us the contrast. Gives the contrast. In contrast, a gentle heart is fertile ground. That's the fertile ground God uh, desires. A gentle heart is fertile ground for the engrafted word or the word being implanted in you. That's what that engrafted word means. It means that this word being implanted. See, see, we're gonna, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but, but just hearing the word uh, 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 does not get it. This word must then be implanted in you. And in order for it to be implanted in you, it must reach fertile ground. And this fertile ground that's ready to receive seed is a humble and gentle, meek heart. All right? So I got I got a deal. If I really am serious about the word of God being implanted in me, I got to be just as serious about making sure I'm approaching my hearing with the right heart, that being a meek heart, a humble spirit, all right? Can't have a whole bunch of contention and think that now the word is going to take root in me, all right? So a gentle heart is, a, is, a, is fertile ground. Gentle heart is fertile ground for the engrafted word or the word being implanted in you now, now, really, the the, the here the gospel um, is, is is presented as an image of something being implanted by another source. Got to understand that we cannot implant the word in our hearts ourselves. There's another source. All right. But watch this. All right, we're gonna get to we're gonna explain that a little more. But now gotta understand the original character of the unbelieving heart. Uh, the unbeliever's heart is unreceptive to re receiving the word. All right? That's the unbeliever. But in, in, in the case of the believer, because of regeneration. That regeneration uh, brought about by being born again, the original character of your heart. We're talking to the believer, the original character uh, that was not receptive to being uh, uh, having the word implanted 
this original character has now been changed to the new character of the new creation. The ability to, 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 to have the word implanted in you as a believer is in place. Yet, we can still block it from being implanted by having uh, uh, filthiness, uh, naughtiness, wrath, all the things that we've already talked about that are displeasing what to God, it, that block God's word from being received. Now, again, yeah, yeah, I heard it. I was at church, and we're going to get into that uh, uh, either tonight or next week. I heard it, I, but I didn't receive it because there's too much going on that's blocking the receipt. All right? But, be, not, but, but know that regeneration, being born again, has changed your character. Whether you act like who you really are or not, the Bible declares that the believer is a new creation. All right, And so because of this new creation, yourself, you who you are, all right, uh, uh, um, new creation, this new character allows for the production of good fruit. Each believer is capable of producing good fruit that Jesus talked about in Mark. We all have been given now this, uh, this, the, the capability to produce good fruit as a result of the word being implanted. We all have the ability, all right, but we have to, God gave us a will. So the believer has to allow the gospel and the gospel principles to be engrafted or implanted in the gentle heart. So I'm back to that heart again. I've got to deal with my, my heart. I've got to deal with my spirit. I've got to deal with what's going on inside of me if I'm serious about the word being implanted in me. All right? Here's the deal. And, 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 and all of us, whether we want to be honest or not, we we got to admit that 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 on our own devices, we will produce bitter fruit on our own devices. But through the engrafted word, now watch, I said, now remember I talked about that, that, that this uh, engrafted word, the thought is that, that, that it's being implanted by another source. And I said we would get to it in a moment. This, this engrafted word, this word being implanted in you, is by the Holy Spirit. That's the outside or the other source. We can't, we can't implant the word in ourselves. What we can do is make sure that the heart is ready to receive it. And once the heart is ready to receive it, God is certainly ready and trying to give it by his Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the believer's teacher. The Holy Spirit is the, the, the believer's guide. And, and, and so it is the Holy Spirit that, that engrafts or implants this word and this engrafted word in this gentle heart that's ready to receive. And then once that engrafted word, once that word is implanted in the heart of the believer, you can be guaranteed that uh, 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 what will come forth is sweet fruit because it now is in accord with the righteousness of God, the completeness that God seeks to produce in every believer, and what and the, the, the way you see this righteousness of God uh, coming forth in the life of the believer, this completeness, it comes forth as fruit. You'll see some outward uh, manifestations of it of because it has now taken root in the heart and now it brings forth fruit. All right? Because again, we all go all the way back to verse 18. 
uh, this fruit would then be in accord with being a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Go to 1 Peter. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 1 and 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. All right? No, again, watch what, 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 what Peter says. He says you got to put away some stuff. Got to put away what? Some what? Some stuff. Got to put away some stuff so that now, I'm a new, as a newborn baby, I, I want the sincere milk. I want the word, you know, because I want to grow. I want to grow uh, in spiritual maturity. All right? So the text, uh, the text, the, the text uh, points to the fact that there is a strong incentive for Christians to comply with the word, uh, what, the, what, 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 what James is saying, there's a strong uh, incentive to comply because of the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. There's an incentive there to put away malice, to put away envy, to put away strife, to put away all those, the naughtiness, filthiness, to put away those things so that now the heart, the gentle heart is ready to be implanted with the word of God because it is able to save your soul. The, the soul, the soul is the whole person. You are a soul. And, and, and so the engrafted word is able to save all of you in its entirety. Go to 2 uh, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It is what? The word that is able to save your soul. All right? But now here's the thing. Always keep in mind, the word is able. The word will do what the word says it will do, but we must keep in mind that God gave humanity a will. God desires everybody to be saved, but everybody won't be saved because they have a will and they reject. So, so we got to keep in mind that we have a will. And so, so we, uh, humanity has to cooperate by submitting or giving over humanity or, and let me make it personal, we have to give over our will and, and then obey the will of God. Like I said, salvation is available to everybody. Salvation is available to everybody, race, read, uh, creed, color, male, female, does not matter your nationality. Uh, salvation is available to everybody, yet there are many who will perish and go and spend eternity in hell because they refuse to cooperate. They refuse to accept salvation uh -huh, through Christ Jesus. Yet the word, it's right here, the word is able to, to save your souls without fail. And now, in the case of the Christian, the Christian who has already accepted Christ as Savior, the Christian who has already inherited eternal life, 
You must understand that's, that's your initial salvation, eternal life, with, has been given. But you're still being saved through sanctification by the Holy Spirit. Because day by day, if we cooperate, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, seeks to mold us, mold you as a Christian into the image of Christ day by day. However, watch this, this progress, this process of reshaping, this process of remolding uh, uh, the believer is dependent upon your cooperation by submitting to the teachings, the hearing of the word, and following the guidance of your teacher, who is the Holy Spirit. We receive this engrafted word, and then we have the Holy Spirit, who is our guide to now guide us and navigate us how we are to apply this word. But you got to submit. God uh, could force us, but he did not create robots. He did not. He gave us a will. And he wants us to what? Follow him out of love, not because he makes us do it, but because we want to do it and we seek to do it because we seek to please him, knowing how much he has done for us, is doing for us, and will do for us in all eternity. All right? So, 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 the word of God, the word, is the power to save. But by God's design, uh, 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 the design of God is that, that this power is effectual when it is received with meekness. That, that this word is powerful. It's, it's, it's as sharp as a two-edged sword. It's powerful. And it will do what it, it is intended to do but God wants uh, 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 this power that we have. He's given us that we can have meekness. And when we have meekness, now we have a ready heart for the engrafted word. All right? Uh, uh, you know it's powerful to be childlike uh, in our spirit. It takes, it's powerful uh, to be childlike. It, it's powerful uh, to be humble. It's, it's powerful uh, to be un, uh, uh, not have contentious, uh, contentious spirit. And that's power. Um, and God wants us to use that power so that his power um, can now be effectual in changing our lives. All right? So it's a, a childlike, humble, uncontentious spirit that allows the power of God's word to be implanted in your heart and then, once that word is implanted in your heart uh, uh, and really received, and when it takes root, the word will have its perfect work. Thank you, God, for uh, uh, teaching us tonight. God, I, I know I'm the facilitator, but you, uh, by your Holy Spirit, are the teacher. And God, we just thank you um, that you didn't leave us defenseless uh, in this mean and cruel world. You've given us your word, you've given us the power uh, that we might uh, uh, be meek and humble in our heart so that our hearts are ready to receive your word, that this word, this engrafted word, that this word be implanted in us. You've given us that. God, help us that we might do our part uh, so that we are positioned correctly to receive that which is perfect. And your word is certainly perfect. We thank you for each heart tonight. God, we pray um, that, that, that something said tonight uh, has taken root, O oh, Heavenly Father, in, in, in the minds of, of those who are listening. God, we pray that if there be one listening tonight has not uh, received the gift of salvation, has not received and accepted uh, your gift through Jesus Christ, that they might be saved. God, that they would believe uh, in uh, the fact that, that Jesus is the Christ, that he did come to this world, that he did die for the sins of the world, oh God, that he was indeed buried, 
but that on the third day, uh, by your spirit, God, you raised him from the dead. And, and, and you've let us know that if we believe that, we are saved. And we then thank you, God, that once we're saved, you are sanctifying us day by day that we will be molded into the image of Christ. God, we, we thank you. We pray, God, as always, for those who are bereaved. God, comfort them uh, uh, at this hour. Strengthen their faith that they would know that, that you are God that never makes a mistake and that you are too wise uh, to ever do anything wrong. God, thank you. Uh, we pray for our sick and shut in, that they, they may be comforted uh, by you uh, in your own way. Oh, Heavenly Father, heal them, we pray, according to your will. Uh, God, we thank you now. Until next time, in the name of Jesus, amen. Go in peace.